everyone, welcome back to my channel and this is a day in the life of a software engineer job hunting edition. I quit my job to take a gap year and now I've been job hunting for the past few months. In this video, I'll go through how I've been preparing for coding and system design interviews. channel i like to start my day by first going on a walk it just makes my day more positive but i want to give you guys an update on how my job search has been going but first let me get some tea Let's talk about how the job search has been going so far. Sorry it's been a while. I've been so focused on my job search process. I've not been doing anything outside of doing things that apply to the job search. No one tells you how applying to jobs is like having two jobs. It's not even like having one job because you have to talk to so many different companies. You have, especially if you're in a software engineering interview, you have to study, like you're studying for a test. It's a really, really tough and difficult process. So that's why I've kind of been MIA for the past month or so. But I'm back because I feel like I've gotten to a point where I can actually make time for content. Let's talk about the job search so far. This has definitely been the hardest job search process I've ever experienced. We are 200 applications deep with zero offers. But on a better note, I'm in the interview process for seven different companies right now. So I'm hoping one or all of them results in an offer. But because we're in processes, I'm definitely going to be focused these next few weeks on you know getting up to speed with my coding interviews and system design interviews. And I'm gonna talk about how I get prepped for those types of interviews in this video. Let's get started. The first thing I always start my day with is applying to about 10 jobs a day. When I first started, I learned this the hard way that you have to keep on turning applications even if you're in final rounds. The platforms I use are LinkedIn, Otta, Built-in, and well-found jobs. For me, I found that actually the best platform where I actually get the highest response rate is built in. LinkedIn has so many fake jobs, so many jobs that are reposted like a hundred times. So you mean to tell me you reposted this job and now 10,000 people have applied, you haven't found one person? That's your problem at that point. I'll still use LinkedIn as a place to apply, but I kind of prioritize built-in, well-found, Otta a little bit over LinkedIn. And I will apply to a job even if I don't have a referral. But when I'm looking at a job application, I try to see if I have anyone in my network that works at that company to see if I can get a referral. If I can't get a referral, I try to see if I can find the hiring manager for that role and I will send them a message. Believe it or not, this actually does work. It doesn't work very frequently, but it does work for one of the final rounds. I feel like the, one of the reasons that made me stand out was because I DM'd the hiring manager. Another tip that's really helped me apply to jobs faster is using this Chrome extension called Simplify. It does a better job autofilling all of the parts of an online application, and it really allows me to apply to jobs much faster. And the final tip I have for making applying to jobs a lot more effective is setting up alerts for the websites where you're applying to jobs. For all the platforms where I apply to jobs, I have alerts set up so that I can apply within the first 24 hours of when a job is posted. This really allows me to hear back from jobs. So that's kind of how my process works. I like to thank the sponsor of this video, Coursera. Through my job search, I'm taking the opportunity to learn new skills that can set me apart from other candidates. One of the fastest growing areas in tech right now is AI. Generative AI and other technologies have the potential to automate work activities that absorb 60 to 70% of employees' time. Coursera has numerous courses on generative AI, but this specific generative AI course for software developers is something that I'm definitely going to check out during my job search process. This course focuses on exploring real-world AI 
AI applications. So you can see how AI is revolutionizing everything from content creation to software development, mastering prompt engineering. So you can learn the art of crafting effective prompts to unlock the full potential of generative AI. This course also teaches you how to leverage AI to generate code and also teaches you how to innovate with AI. So you can develop cutting edge software engineering solutions using the latest AI tools and techniques. Don't forget to check out the Coursera Google Generative AI course for software developers linked in the description box below. Investing your skills now can make a huge difference in your job search process. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of my job search prep. So my job search every single day is broken up into two main focus areas. The first focus area is, is on the coding interview. The second focus area, which we'll do later in the day, is all about system design interviews. I hate coding interviews so much, but they are the reality of the job search for a software engineer slash developer advocate. I've passed quite a few coding rounds, but I've also failed a lot. But this is my general strategy when it comes to being prepared to pass coding interviews. I have a three part approach. The first approach is just to master the data structures and algorithms. So if you're not familiar, this is a list of all of the data structures and algorithms that appear usually during the interview process. And the way I've been mastering it is by doing few things. Because I have the experience of doing coding interviews Views. like this is my fourth job search process so I've done like a lot of coding interviews already so for me right now with this process I'm just kind of brushing up on those fundamentals because it's been almost four years since I did a coding interview my first goal is to master the basics so making sure that I have a fundamental understanding of arrays linked lists stacks queues trees graph hash maps and all the algorithms and during this prep too I also kind of review for each of those data structures and algorithms, the common patterns that you'll see during the interview. So for example, there are different patterns to solve certain interviews. One pattern is a backtracking algorithm. Another like pattern is you need to do depth first search or breadth first search. Another pattern is like the two pointer approach. So yeah, there are these different patterns within each data structure and algorithm. And I try to make sure I understand these patterns in this category of mastering these algorithms. Another thing I also do too is I also make sure I understand the time, the space complexity of these different data structures as well. So the way I'm able to really just make sure that when I say mastering, I understand what these data structures are. I know their space and time complexity. I also know the patterns of solving questions that have these data structures and algorithm. The way I have done that is by doing a course. So there are two ways I've been doing that so far. So I have this Leet Code Explore course that I've been going through. It's taken me about two months to get through the entire thing. And that's been really helpful. And they do an amazing job breaking down what the data structure is, what the time complexity is, and then where the study patterns that you'll see for that data structure and algorithm question. I'm also doing a program called Formation. This is a very like luxury expensive program that I'm paying for out of pocket, but it's been really, really helpful in learning and brushing up on those data structures and algorithms. Once I feel like I've mastered data structure and algorithm, next is really doing a lot of practice questions. Luckily in the, the Leet Code course as well as in Formation, what I'm finding is that after we've gone through understanding the data structures and algorithms, the next section is doing as many practice problems as possible. So for me, I'm doing the practice problems associated with that Leet Code course and formation. And on top of that, I'm also working through Neat Code 150 questions. So these are 150 very popular questions and he does an amazing job. The creator of this list also has a YouTube channel. He's done an amazing job explaining different data structures and algorithms. So I also really enjoy using that list as a way of practicing. Now that we've mastered the data structures and algorithms we've practiced the next thing we need to do is mock interview so mock interview is an essential part of my prep process even before i completed the leak code course and formation i made sure that i was doing mock interviews just so i could really practice what it's like to actually explain and talk through a problem i can't tell you how valuable it is to do mock interviews but I feel like they're a cornerstone of the prep process. I'm doing all of my mock interviews with Formation. That's the number one reason I decided to actually go for Formation because in their program, they have a lot of like engineers who are currently at top companies who can give you mock interviews, but these websites are also really helpful for getting mock interviews as well. 
You can also ask friends. I've asked people in my network to give me mock interviews and that's also been really helpful as well. But yes, that's my entire prep process for doing these coding interviews. Right now, I'm definitely, I feel like I've done every single part of this process. As we're still continuing to look for jobs now, the way my prep looks like is that like I'll work through some problems in Neat Code, like four questions daily. I'm not always able to get to that, but four questions daily where I say them out loud and I try to see if I can solve it just to make sure I'm practicing because I've done a lot of the base level understanding. Now it's time to just practice and making sure that I can like pass these interviews and increasing the amount of questions I have practice with. When I last interviewed in 2020, system design was not a huge part of the interview process. Now system design is used to show if a candidate is senior and even appears in so many interviews from mid-level all the way down to junior engineering interviews. So if you're currently in your job search, it's so important to practice for system design interview questions. Because I'm a total newbie to system design and this was my first time preparing for it, I had a lot to learn. If you're in this situation, to bridge this gap, I recommend one of these three courses. This Leak Code Explorer System Design course, this Coursera System Design course, or Formation, which is what I'm using to overcome my lack of system design knowledge. Especially if you have no experience, just like me, these courses are so comprehensive and they really explain in detail all of the components of a system. When I'm done with the system design course, I'll be practicing common system design interview questions and I'll be using this website, Hello Interview, to review some of the common system design interview questions. And finally, to wrap up preparing for system design interviews, I'm planning to do as many mock system design interviews that I can get, which I'm using formation. That's basically how I prepare for coding interview questions and system design interview questions. It's a lot to do. For me, I feel like I've needed three months to really learn everything and I still am not done with my prep process, but I'm still applying and I really feel like we're getting really close to getting an opportunity.